Patrice and I was was you know hanging out and stuff like Patrice grew up without him without a dad with his mother and then when he would get mad at me he would give me the silent treatment like he just I'd be calling him yo what's up and he just would ignore me and I'd be calling him and calling him and it was just weird because it was so weird for me for that because you know he was always seemed like a masculine dude you know and mm -hmm. but when it came to him the way he socially you know, yeah, argued with it. Yeah, yeah, it was chick shit. He would, he would, he would give me a, a silent treatment. Yo, yo, yo! What up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Richard Ronovich, and he's here. We discuss when it's time to have kids, what it's like to have kids, how to make uh, kids. You make our kids, our sons, and our daughters the best people that we possibly can. The do don't do's and don'ts of parenting and remembering to believe in yourself. This was a really good one. He had the breakout, so we 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 did a like a, you know, just the family on the on the Patreon side. Yeah, that's, but that's right. If you love the show and want to support the show and you want bonus content, go over to Patreon.com/slash Manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus shows every week. That's where we do the listener mail. And also, I'm uploading all the old episodes of Man School and the Beige Phillips Show, our original, the original name. And then they're going up exclusively on patreon.com slash manschool202. Yeah. This week, we uh, we continue our conversation with each other here. Just the family as we talk about uh, how, a, how, how does a woman know who you are, the dangers of red pill thinking, and what our expectations of women should be. It's all over at patreon.com slash manschool202 and if you want to support the show further i do relationship consultations you can email me at advice from harry at gmail.com also please like share on the youtube and and everything else um it's really important to, for the algorithm um it keeps us doing what we're doing thank you let's get at it peace i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either i'm just a better man better man Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade, GYBB, get your balls back, WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, I've, now, I might have said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Um, this is a good friend of the show, a good friend of mine, known as dude forever, very, very funny dude. Um, give it up for my boy, uh... Rich Aronovich. Um, what's going on, baby? How you been? I was a moment where you forgot my name. I, I, I you know why I'm gonna tell you why what 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 fucked me up. I usually I usually introduce Harry first. Yeah, yeah, you, and you it, had a and pause. It, and it, I was like, oh shit, like I was you so forgot. excited. What happened was Dante forgot that he was supposed to introduce me, then remembered halfway through, but when <laughs> he remembered was the middle of the introduction and I was like, oh boy. All right. Yeah, and then uh, and I'm 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 ex you know Rich, I love you, bro. And I'm I was excited I was he excited. Does know your that, name. I mean I, he does I, know your name. I, I I was excited that you were on and I just forgot about Harry. Anyway, Harry, how are you doing? Good? Oh life is good. I'm a bit better now that Rich Aronovich <laughs> is here. All right, good enough. Fair there enough. <laughs> <laughs> Rocking a stash. I love the stash. What's going on? Yeah. Rich? Life decisions. Well, I mean look I was doing we were talking about my goofy dance videos mm. before, and uh, if I forgot my mustache, I'd get a zillion comments about it. So I finally was like, let me see. I grew it, and I was like, and then I had like Yamanika Sandra was like, you look sexy. You look sexy. And then Rachel Fiennes was like, you look sexy. And I was like, all right. And then I was hey. like, it kind of fits with my goofy hair, yeah. which is wet right now, so it's not as big, but it'll dry <laughs> out. Cool, yeah. cool. I, um, it's, it's funny because... Um... <laughs> we were talking about the dancing and how how it's like uh so I, I i was telling rich how you know i went out to tijuana to do the do the stem cells and they had this young dude who was a boxer right he's what he's like kind of an internet boxer right and uh and this dude didn't know who roy jones was didn't know who marvin Hagler was he didn't know like it's just it's so you tried to have a conversation with him about boxing because you are a boxing fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just nothing going. It's like I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know. And then he shows me some internet guy who's got a million followers who has not even boxed yet, right? He's just just videotaping of him workouts. He's supposed to have his first fight in three months. You know this guy? This guy so and so. I go who? No, like where does he? What? It's not even a boxer yet. He hasn't even been punched in the, 
in twenties, you know, barely twenty, you know, if anything. And the guy he's showing know. me. If you're a boxer. How do you? I mean, I, I don't. I'm not a boxing fan, and I know Roy. I mean, Marvin yeah, Hagler, yeah. Sugar yeah. Ray. Maybe I mean, it's just because uh, we were around. It was part part of the the zeitgeist of what was going on, the entertainment, and we got it by proxy. And that's just not the way it is anymore, I guess, because they don't. There's so much. I think the internet has spread everything out to the point where if you're not actively seeking stuff, you get kind of caught in like a, a, a little alley. Yeah, a little loop. Supposedly, but I would think that if you're YouTubing, it's almost like you got to make an effort not to, yeah. Yeah. not to to see those guys. But then, like I was saying. There's comedians out there now who are starting who don't know who George Carlin is because that's yeah, not these how are, they these were. Are, these are idiots. Like when I started, I, I had VHS tapes and I looked at everybody to yeah. see, oh, I like I like the silliness of this guy. I like how he says something serious. I like, mm -hmm. you know, I studied before I ever took the mic, but that's, yeah. you know, I'm cut from a different cloth. Well, it's also a situation where I think you, you get to do whatever you want to do. You could just create your own content. And so there's no real standard of doing it and there's a lot of people who who uh consider themselves comedians simply because they do videos funny videos and they and then they uh, was why are you hating on matt right why are you hating on matt right <laughs> but matt there's the thing matt was a comic though matt matt has been a comic for a while i don't know, I, don't know. I just i hate his abs and i'm jealous <laughs> matt 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 it comes from Matt comes from us, though. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, I don't. I have no comment on him. I really don't know the guy. Right, and, right, right. Uh, all I know is, you know, I'm. It's the, it's the com. It, you know, it's the good looking type, right? So it's like it was Dane Cook, and then it was Chris D'Elia, and now it's him. It's fine. It is what it is. You know, I, a guy that I know opened for him and said he's really got twenty minutes, and that's where I went. Rrr. But he's making buku bucks, and I'm jealous. Yeah, why? I'm just gonna tell you honestly. Because okay. I'm not Buku Bucks. Yeah, do you really? In my mind, yeah. Yeah, but you can't yes. do it that really. way, though. So yeah, here's, but you, here's, here's you what you want. You want Buku Bucks for doing in the context do. of of who you are. You don't want to, you don't want Buku Bucks. Right. I, I don't you know? need, yeah, um, you, you know, don't... girls throwing themselves at me. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. they were saying they're, th they're throwing underwear at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Poor guy. I feel bad for him. Poor guy. Well, yeah, Doug, I'm, you know, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm, I'm, I've been there, you know. Well, you literally have been there, Dante, because been there. you were uh, uh, an exotic dancer. Yeah, you can say you stripper. Getting, you can say stripper. Well, I'm Man, trying to class I'm it up. <laughs> trying to class up your resume. You uh, dick, I, I call it dick shaker. But <laughs> I'm a humor specialist. <laughs> yeah, it's but um. Yeah, it's had a, that happen, but it's it's uh. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that person or individual is happy. So we get sometimes we do get jealous. I have no idea who the guy is. I mean, I've seen clips and whatever, but uh, I don't know who he is. But what I've learned over the years is that when you look at people and they have certain aspects of what you want, you got to remember the whole package. You got to take the whole. Yeah, picture. you got to take the whole right. thing. You, and you gotta get get the, just the steering wheel. You got to get the engine and the wheel. Yeah, you got to. You can't. You don't get to you do it like a fucking buffet and just cherry pick what you want and leave the. It's not like that. Because right now there's a there's several comics that are doing really well. Several comedians that we know personally. That all three of mm -hmm. us in this in this on this virtual room know personally, and they are doing successfully very well. And I know for a fact that their personal lives are, are in shambles. In shambles. And it's name sort of like uh, I, we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> I'll name names. Don't worry. We're not just not here. I'll, I'll let you know because uh, that's how the I want to know. Mm. I'll say this. I'll say this. The two that I'm thinking of have both been guests on this podcast many, <gasps> many, many, nah. many years ago. Many years ago. Yeah. So. yeah. Give me a last name. Just give me a last name. <laughs> oh man, you can't even. If I give you a last, you will. It's so it's so wide open. You will go. Are you fuck? You won't even go. You go. You won't even have to go. Ah, uh, you won't even have to. Look, you'll know immediately. So, uh, but um, yeah, you can't. You can. Uh, you you can't just cherry pick, um, and and not get it all. And, and so I think that that is the thing. You got to take it all. I think and, a great uh, acknowledgement is at least that you just go. I'm jealous. And that's it, you know. Like at least that's that's a, a step ahead of a lot of other people who just hate and they don't know why they hate. And you're like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just jealous that that person is doing well. Yeah. Um, 
So, you know, you could check your uh, – <laughs> why did <laughs> – <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, we were writing in the chat. So we gave we gave Rich the last names, and then he gave the first names in question mark as if it wasn't them. <laughs> it would be like if we were, if I put in last name, uh, we just put in it's Biden, and he goes Joe question mark. I, I go, I go Tyson. You went Mike, <laughs> M- Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good that's a good feature this chat that scratches the itch now yeah there you go no we want to do that because i hate hey listen i hate doing it to the listeners but i got to maintain relationships with some of these fucking people <laughs> yeah Dante you, you know l- there's, some, there's a code there's a code yeah. i will i'll slam people but i won't slam people that i like you know i won't yeah. I, yeah. and then like i them personally yeah it's not even a bad and, and i know that they'll they'll be in a world of fucking hurt their girl will put them in a world of hurt if i do and i don't want to do that yeah uh, and that's the thing i was i was you know that's why i said like i'm not really talking crap about rife i just am jealous yeah. of his abs and his success but i don't know the guy like i said i don't have any really i, yeah. I don't really have a, a dog in that fight yeah but there's yeah. plenty of people with abs who are miserable yeah. they got good abs you know yeah, no, yeah, no. you're right. You're gonna have yeah. the whole yeah. car. Cause I always, some... I always say, uh, you, you know, I was thinking about this. I saw this documentary on um, Kurt Cobain, and I'm like, here's a guy who literally changed the face of rock and roll in terms of the whole grunge thing, and then fucking murdered himself. Like, you know, mm. you're like millions of dollars, like you said, throwing panties, artistic whole, success, creative success too. you, you know, know historical, forward. historical success. I mean, he, he will be, he'll be the king of grunge. I mean, I, they, he'll go down his and then murder himself. So, yeah, but I feel like drugs took his life, you know? Yeah. But what are the I drugs? That cut him off. Yeah. But come on, Rich. We, or we, the drugs, there was misery. It wasn't like he was doing well and was like, I'm going to put a needle in my arm. No, Things yeah, but that's, but that's the point, Rich. You're correct. Is the Look, drugs we know in, but what we is know the people thing that caused the drug use. That we know to, people yeah. who who have uh, who are very rich and famous, and we n- never go anywhere without fucking uh, a a liter of vodka. Yeah, that's check true. The, check the chat. <laughs> well, I, I, I knew <laughs> before you saw it. That what you said publicly last week. I don't know why we got to keep. <laughs> Yeah, that's hard to watch when you see uh, when you see someone you're going, oh man, yeah, this fan didn't fix the hole, yeah, oh boy, oh yeah, because it doesn't, because it doesn't. I'll tell you what it is. I mean, uh, which is so- why I choose not to be famous, Dante. I know, I've chosen. I know, I know. You guys know I'm in this anonymous program known as my career. Mm. Uh, uh, <laughs> what's funny is the thing the most I've ever seen Rich happy is is when this when he talks about his son. Mm. Yeah. So talks about that, and it's the, look at the look at the fucking joy yeah. in his face. I just mention it, yeah. and, it, and uh, he's asking questions now. It's the best. Yeah. What kind of questions is he asking? What are and what are some he, of the... just it just he's he's two and he's gonna be uh, three October twenty seventh. Mm-hmm. So he's in that like really inquisitive age. Like, do you smell something, Daddy? Like he just mm-hmm. the way his voice is. Mm-hmm. He just um. It's a very crazy thing what nature does because it's like it, literally it's the happiest I am is just with my kid. Like this morning yeah. I was just watching TV with them. It was just leaning under my arm and I was like, this is just the best. And I'm tired. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, you know what I mean? I, I could. I woke up and then my head was all over me. I woke up in the middle of the night and you know I'm just like, this is just. And when I'm alone with them in the park, I'm gonna go pick him up at five. He's gonna be daddy, and then it's just you know it's just like I don't it's know the greatest you, thing Harry, ever. You have a kid? Here, you have a kid, or you have one on the way. I can't I convince Gary to G- Harry to do it. He won't do it. He, he doesn't. You idiot! You have a great girl. Are you still with I, that girl? Yes, we are. We are very much together. You yeah, yeah. She's itching. I don't know, but I can barely get okay. it. Uh, I can barely get through the day and do this podcast. And then okay, I so let me. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I, I this is the most inconvenient time for me ever, and I was like, I can't bail on Dante. I was gonna. I started coming up with a rolodex of excuses. Yeah, I get hard. it. Here's the thing. You just get a bigger plate and it's the best thing you've done by a billion percent. Everything. Yeah. It's like you see in color. Your love goes from walking to flying. Yeah. Be a selfish piece of shit. No, no. Your podcast <laughs> is more important. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. Well, there's battles you have and, you know, that's one of them. The other thing I think about is slightly, not as as much, but just like... <laughs> My girl, it's gonna be all about the kid, which it should be. But then Rich you put go, your name in the comments. Oh, did he put Harry? <laughs> 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 
I don't even know. Harry? Question mark? Question mark? Yeah. Harry? <laughs> are we talking about Harry now? <laughs> These are blind items that are just... just... Harry, I had the same attitude as you before my kid was born, and I was yeah. scared, blah, 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 and I didn't... I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. This is going to... You know, he's going to be... And it just... I mean, the biggest... The only thing I regret is not doing it sooner. Yeah, that I'm concerned about because part of me is leaning more towards having kids now, and I want to do it sooner because I'm, you know, I'm in that later age bracket. Listen, that I, I don't want to be tired. Rich has got a hard out at five. You got a hard in. That's at true. Five ten. <laughs> <laughs> you start. Ba -dum -boom. Whatever, I'm not gonna convince no, you. No, I understand. I, it's something I'm giving a lot course. of. It's something I'm giving a lot of thought to for sure. It's just uh, then you also wonder about, you know, when she comes through because you know then it's about the kid and you know you got to it changes the confines of the relationship because yeah. there's a lot more management yes. that you have to do to keep from. Because sure. I realize my girl is she's so sweet and so wonderful, but I realized women only know one way to comfort, which is to mother. Mm. So sometimes I catch. That's why you need of, a man. That's right, but. Sometimes I catch her trying to mother me and I have to like push back on it a little and put it in in, in check. We were at a uh, it's funny. We were at a wedding and she uh, pulls a tit out and is like, come on, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was like, you know, could we just pull the curtain up first before the, the, what happened to those little privacy curtains? Um, but like, you know, I found her being like, you know, she was nervous about her friends in the wedding and this is the first time we're, I'm meeting some of them so she's like you know you're on stay off your phone do this do that you're like uh, and I had to be like uh, she, she didn't like my elbows on the table I go listen I go uh, you calm the fuck down you need to calm uh, in, in the in as many words I go you need to cool it I have a mother I don't need another mother oh first thing I did uh, Dante mm. was I just went silent because again you don't you don't yeah. answer unless you're asked a question right you know, and so I just stopped. I just, uh, you know, sat on the bench and started doing. And then eventually, she noticed, like, "What's what's your deal?" I go, "You're." Uh, I go, "I don't. I have a mother. I know how to be appropriate. I know what the appropriate level is. I'm an adult, so I'm gonna need you not to do." And she understood immediately. She's like, "Okay, fair enough, fair enough." I went like she. It's weird because I'll point that out to her, and she'll be like, "You know what? Yeah, I did. I j I went in too hard, like, because she gets nervous, and that's her instinct." Or if she's worried about me, and I worry that when we have a kid, that that's going to be like multifold. Because now you're that level of love is something I I already know going in the love she's going to have for that child. I already know I'm going to take a secondary role, and that you have to, and that's the job as a as a, you're supposed to. The kid's supposed yeah, to. yeah, but you her. also take a secondary job, secondary role of her fucking nagging you, oh, yeah, because <laughs> you don't matter that you don't matter you, you don't. she's got bigger fish to fry yeah, yeah you don't matter but the problem is sometimes it goes she it becomes almost overprotective and oh, I that's to, gonna happen that it's gonna happen. gonna happen and, I and to, she's gonna think you don't know what the fuck you're doing she's the only one that knows what you're doing be, but go ahead because go ahead. we did go through this when we were watching my brother's kids my my niece and nephews you know a couple times we would you know take them for a couple days and I saw the change in her in a couple of days and she's very mothering. And then it becomes very like the kids like, hey, you have to like and, and again, I, I know how to behave and I know the kids come first to me, too. But it's not as fast as she wants because she starts to panic because it's the kids and there she views. So here's what it is. The instinct is to the kids safety. Mm -hmm. The problem is women tend to view inconvenience to the kids as safety under the same category. Yeah, it's all the same. It's all the same. So, like, if the kid needs a snack, it's like, where's the snack? Like, hey, hey calm, calm down. Yeah. The kid is not dying. We will take care of this. There's no need to do this in a. Yeah, but, but you're talking like you know. You you don't know what, how she's going to be. You're, in other you're, words, Harry, you don't know shit. This is <laughs> Harry, you don't know shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, the sample it, I mean, rate the, that I'm getting, I can only go by the sample rate that I have, which is she is very motherly with these kids, all kids that she sees, all the kids that she takes care of. So I can only go by the sample rate of that. That's the only information I can go off of. Yeah, but if your kid's hungry, then your kid grows a tail and horns and you want to make sure you're 
kid gets fed. <laughs> so it's for you too. That when they go, oh, he's hungry, let's feed him. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah to a degree. I mean, I just like if I'm hungry, like you saw, I was eating before. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't hangry at this spot and be like, get a kid, you fucking loser. I wanted yeah. to be like, oh, I hear you, Harry. I hear you. Oh, you have a lot of meat yeah. here. <laughs> well, I and you know, I'm going to tell you something that I've learned, and this is from me not having my son here, right? And my son being in England. Uh, and this is something I've learned, not just from that, but from everything. Um, what doesn't come out in the wash comes out in the rinse. And so when you, when you're, when people make these decisions and the decisions are not well balanced, not well thought out and, and not logical, it comes back to bite you in the ass. And that is anything. And so mm. I know one of the things that I've said plenty of times is I've said, you know, um, my wife babies, my son, um, she she doesn't really discipline him. Um, and he will get to a point where he's going to give her the business like she she you know she she loves him too much this is her first he he is her world and he and she seems to think that she knows it all and 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 I know it not to be and and any any person without boundaries and and discipline and it, and it ain't going to be me that's going to have to it's deal very, with it yeah it's very tough because um i've seen it i've seen it extremes I've yeah. seen like no boundaries, no nap yeah. time, no bedtime, no rules. And the kids are a nightmare. Right. And they are it's and it's the parents and right. you can see it. And you're Shout like, shout out to Bobby Kelly, who we uh, <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I'm just you should have put that in the chat. Hold on. Bobby. Nah. Code three, Bobby. Code three. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then I've seen it where they're too strict. Yeah. When the kids rebel. So there has to be a final. Like I saw a kid. Uh, now this is a new kind of thing where like older parents they hit their kids. This is this is yeah. enough studies have come out where you go. This really at, at two years old it does not make sense to the kid while they're getting hit. It doesn't work. Right. It just fucks them up. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Um, and so what we're trying to do is balance between um, between discipline and trauma. Yeah. No, I mean we're just trying to like when it's safety, there's discipline. So you save it for safety. Um, and then sometimes you're like, what fight am I willing to have today? Yeah. You know, and then the other part is I have to say to myself, like, cause he's, you know, he's great. Yeah, I'm make, making, you know, making, and he's adorable, but I just go in my mind, I just don't make a face. And I go, this will stop. This will stop. This will mm -hmm. stop. But eventually they run out of gas and then mm -hmm. you get what you need to get done. Right. But it's, yeah, it takes, it takes some inner strength because right. you also love them so much. You don't want to see them in any kind of turmoil, right. you know? And that comes with like, we're going to start potty training. We're sleep training. I'm like, we were we were trapped in his room forever. Now we're like, listen, you're going to be by yourself. You're going to cry. It's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt right. you. Eventually, you're going to learn how to do this on your own. Yeah. And he does. But it's, you know, it's a little heart wrenching because you don't want to cause pain to your kid. It's like the, it's instinctual. But also, you know, long term, you're going to cause it may way worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll be screwed up. Well, I so it is one of the things is like, for instance, like um, my, when my son goes to bed, my wife goes to bed. <laughs> like she goes, she has to go. It's time for her to go. Now, if she tries to, it, she can sneak out every once in a while. But now her her life is is done at nine o'clock. And when he gets up, it's done. Now, if if he was here, that absolutely would not be the case. It would be like you go. How old is he? He's he'll be four next week. And so she goes, she stays in the room with him. Yeah, he won't go to sleep without her. Yeah, yeah, right. She's got, she's got to break that, and she and she won't. She won't break and, it. Um, it's going to drive her crazy until she she breaks it. You know, there's a comic I know who I will not um, say who. Put it in the chat. <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, he already beat me to it for real. He already put it in there. She sl she sleeps in the bed with him, and yeah. she's like 13, 11, 12. Like it's still they sleep in the same bed. Twelve, I, like old, not really young, like old. Yeah. Wow. Is he fucking her? No. <laughs> no, no. I, was, I don't think so. Well, could, where he's from, it could be. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, his choice or the wife's choice or both? Wife's, here? of course. Both. I think. It's, I don't know. I don't know. Because when I talked to him, he was like, 
Because I get the, the every now and again, he's sick or something, he'll crawl him and it's delicious. Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. But it's not, you, we can't sleep. It's not every day. It's not a way no. to live. It's an occasional, just in case emergency, but it's not a way to live. There's no and you way have that, to put that, up boundaries. That, yeah, there's no way that that doesn't have ramifications later on, eventually, 12 years old, to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Just wrote in the chat, Cosby, <laughs> to let us know that, all right, you know what? It's out of the bag. Yeah, that guy, you know what? Yeah, that now it makes sense why his daughter was sleeping in his bed. <laughs> Bill, hold on one second. I'm just going to type Bill, question mark. <laughs> William, doctor. <laughs> Doc, excuse me, doctor. Uh, uh, at least we got to show the respect that the man deserves. Now, here's here's the other thing I think. So, and and then I mean, you can relate to this because uh, uh, Rich is Jewish, and uh, did you have like the helicopter, mo- like the mm, the hovering classic Jewish mom? Did you have that? I'm the youngest. So okay, it's different with the youngest kid. Right, 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 right. They were. Um, I mean, they were. They, they were tired were... by the time you. <laughs> How many yeah, you got? Were... How many kids you got? How many? Yeah. Uh, Two. Okay. And I think it was. Two and you or two? No, just two total. Okay. Okay. My sister is a very successful lawyer and um, I'm a traveling, you know, clown. <laughs> and um, I think there's, you know, my sister is very organized and a lot of time. I think that that being the first kid, they were really on it with yeah, me. Yeah. They were working a lot and I, you know, they, they did the best they could, but they, um, you know, um, I think a lot of when I become overprotective, which I can be. I mean, the mm-hmm. other day, oh, this is not good. I don't. I don't care to admit this, but this guy was, bl- you know, smoking, and he was blowing smoke in my kid's face. So I, w- I was grab. I grabbed my kid. And we were gonna go around him. And then did he, he wait? Said, did he blow it in your like purpose or just smoking? Yeah. Okay. So we okay. were going around him, and I was like, and I was like, and then he starts in on me. I was like, hey man, he just smokes going in my kid's face. Like in other words, like you should get it. Like I'm, you smoke, smoke, but like, and then he started in on me. And then I, you know, I, I lost my mind, which is I don't like to do. My kid didn't really figure it out. Like I just mm. took him on, you know what I mean? And then I was like, mm. I might fight this guy. And I'm like, I can't fight in front of my kid. So mm. I put him on my shoulder and took off kind of like went faster. But the stupid thing is like, I know where he works. He knows me. Like I see him, I pass him every day because I'm going, mm. you know, pick up my kid. So, I, you know, I'm thinking the right thing to do is to go in and say, hey man, I overreacted. I'm protective of my son. I didn't need to, I didn't need the extra noise like you were he was a complete dick like he was just like mm-hmm. he's called he was like uh he's like privilege he's used the word privilege or something which is like i you know whatever was, yeah like whatever he, he said something and then i was just like but when it comes to my son i get nutty because i'm like daddy mm-hmm. bear you know like yeah, my yeah. biggest i mean mike cannon was telling me about a dog the shepherd he was at a party and the shepherd was like showing like aggression and then no. went after his kid and he took the, the dog Young dog, young shepherd, German shepherd. <laughs> and pinned him. And boom, no, he, he, he kicked it in the face and went, and the dog was like, I was like, that's my fantasy. Right. And I love dogs, <laughs> but I want to show my, like, how much, uh, you know, because there's crazy stuff that's happened. My son, when he first started to walk and stuff, he got on top of, like, a, a chair and fell back. And I had hot coffee and I just caught his head and, uh, and like, and like without spilling the coffee, like, right. it was like this weird, like, not even thinking, like, whoa. Yeah. No. No, like you feel after you're like, well, that was pretty cool. Like you just right, do these right. things. But like, yeah. I think I'm gonna go apologize to the guy and tell him like, hey man, I was extra and there was no reason for that. And I'm, oh, you know, just protecting my kid. And you know, I get you have an addiction and you're a weak person. <laughs> uh, so oh boy, this took a short help. right. It'll it's gonna work out <laughs> fine. It'll work out fine. You should have. I know a, that you should get a. Build. I have a black. I have a blackjack. I can let you hold. <laughs> blackjack. <laughs> they old school. Just hit him they, with the can blackjack. Can you get a new blackjack? By the way, what do you mean old school? They don't. I don't think they make those anymore. Do they? Uh, mm. Is there a company now making blackjacks? Like we got. Nobody's buying antique blackjacks, my friend. You can get them. <sighs> I want to see. Let me see if Amazon. What happens if I put? Put blackjacks. a lead slapper. Oh Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> You can get them now. Let me ask you this, because yeah, um, I don't know if I want to talk about this, but I mean, I know, I mean, relationships have their ups and downs. I know you were going through some stuff within the marriage before. Uh, can you it's nay on the um, <laughs> all right, everything's really good right now. It great, is great, great. 
but it's funny. We just had TJ Miller, Miller, and he was talking about you know how like you know he loves Kate, and you know they go through, they go well, through. Listen, I, you, every, every you live with someone for years, and you're going to annoy each other. But we just went away for the first time since our kid was born. Oh, cool, cool. Where'd you go? By ourselves. We went in the tiny house resort in South Cairo, two out north, Lazy River, by the water. Nice, we nice. Yahtzee and you know hard games, and we made candles and tie dye. Kind of remember why you like things. each other. And we have reset and reconnected yeah. in a way. It was like, yeah. oh my god. Because That's it does, so you can't fall down the rabbit hole of like, all right, what is the, because you're like, what is a kid going to eat? What time is it? The kid, 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 kid. Yeah. And then, and then I'm like, kid, career, kid, career, career. And you're, where's, she can get lost in all that. And yeah, I yeah. need to remember like, yeah. hey man, this is, you know, it's a whole bigger picture. You know, like you said, not just the tires and the, and the wheel, but I got to think of the engine. And she's an amazing mother. Like she, my wife is amazing. Like, yeah. and I know this when I'm alone with him, because I, I, I like, she thinks of everything. I don't think. And I'm right. like, oh, God, I got to have water, diapers, his animal, uh, snacks. Fuck, and she uh, just knows. It's just like they just have. Well, just they like, also just... they also understand that his was early on when when baby's young. It's weird how they can tell the difference in the cry. Like it all sounds like. Wah, wah. They, oh, he's I could hear my yeah. kid when my kid. This is another cool thing about being a father. My kid cried. I remember I was getting uh, some challenge from I think the my, either my parents or in laws. Either way, they were trying to parent my parenting, which I didn't <laughs> respond well to. And um, you and I come on. <laughs> I don't like. That. And uh, I remember going. I I know the difference in cry. I go. I hear hungry, up uh, poop, uh, uh, tired. Uh, 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 so I knew based on the cry what the problem was. How long? But I mean, they it was weird because I remember my wife immediately, like the yeah. first week she knew the difference. It was like it was so instinctual for her to know what this Um, it's, uh, you well, know, because you get some guys that are like so oblivious to it. They, uh, you know, like your kid's crying and you you, you picked him up and you, you broke his arm <laughs> and you wonder and you just keep feeding him. So you got a fat baby with a broken arm. It's just. <laughs> yeah, there's. A, I mean, I was, but I was ready and I was in tune. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, my my kid would start crying, and I knew it was just because he would just he was just crying. So I'd put him on my chest and start doing this weird humming thing, uh-huh. and then I would this Native American like yeah, yeah. that just came yeah, to yeah. me, yeah, yeah. and then I was it. I put him under him, and I would he would stop crying immediately. He was like, okay, All right. All right, I'm he safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that that whole bonding thing when they're you skin to skin and it's like legal heroin. You yeah, put yeah. your kid on, he's like, ooh. This yeah, is, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah, Harry, Harry, yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to worry about all that. You don't want to worry. Yeah, I remember doing that. I remember putting oh, them. Sk- you take your shirt off and you go skin to skin, and the kid, did they just know you? They know your smell. It's just yep. And you're sad. exchanging, and their sight, by the way, is from nipple to face. That's how you know what I mean. So that's their their yeah. sight, so they know who's feeding them. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, yeah, I knew it. You know, it's I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna do it all over again. Soon. Oh, you're gonna you're doing another one. Yeah, we're doing another one. Dope, man. Dope, dope. That's good. That's good. I mean, uh, it, oh, by the way, I'm scared too, like I was with him, but I know as soon as he's born. Yeah, you'll be fine. You I mean, know, my I'm... kid, my kid, first thing I happened when my kid was born is um that I I was like freaking out and it was COVID. So uh I, I my the nurse was like, Do you want to meet him? He he came out and she cleaned him up and she said, Do you want to meet him? And I I walked over and I was I was going to touch him. And he was crying with his eyes closed and he grabbed my finger and that was it. It was well like done. the yeah. top of my head exploded. My chest opened up. I was like, right. oh, like like it was just like an instant, instant. I was like, oh, I don't understand fathers that leave. I can't. That's that's weird for me. But maybe I'm in a different. Well, place. a lot of times that they don't really have. Not they a, don't always have a choice too. you know, there's a lot of times the woman doesn't give a choice. Like I didn't leave. I mean, my wife took my son to England, but what's what here's something that I thought about too, is the, the lack of boundaries. Um, but like, but um, my wife is an amazing mother in that, um, like, you know, he finger paints, he, they bake, they, mm-hmm. you know, he, they do arts and crafts. They do, you know, she'll put a smock on him and he'll have brushes and then sometimes and it's clay and it's this it's skull, you know like he does um he'll also do something that i would never have done as a kid because our parents would have never let it do it like 
he'll jump up on the on the co- on the coffee table and mm-hmm. fucking perform like it's the stage, like sing or dance and stuff. And we would have never gotten that. So what I realize is, um, you know, these things that we wear about and Harry, this is something to you, too. I mean, um, what I've, I've something that I've learned across the board, what doesn't come out in the rinse comes out and what doesn't come out in the wash comes out in the rinse. And so I would rather be uh, I would rather him have these these this openness to art and to kind of express himself. And then because eventually he's going to drive her crazy and he's going to have to come back here. I mm. just that's absolutely going to happen um, because they'll get up, but they'll get to the point where she just doesn't have control over him. And it'll be like, you, you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go to the States. You gotta go stay with your father. You know, we need to, we need him here because that will be an issue. Um, 90% of the consultations that I do with guys are guys who didn't have a father or had a father that wasn't masculine enough or wasn't present enough to kind of show their son how to be a man like i mean because kids don't really listen to you what they do is they watch you they mimic Mm -hmm. and watch you so you can say all kinds of shit you want to say but if you're if there's an incongruency in what you're saying and what you're doing they're not then they see the difference and like yeah fuck you you know i'm not you know i'm not i'm not listening to that but i am watching you because it's it's a mimicry that they have. I mean, I, even that skin to skin thing, having that on this, I am every, everybody's dad, whether you have one or not is a, is the, the definition of what we call what we, what men perceive as manhood. And if you have a, a dad, that's not necessarily, you know, manly enough or involved or present or the above, then what happens is you have, you have these guys who come out and they have these kind of feminine tendencies, even these these kind of fem. I've said this a hundred times about you know when Patrice and I was was you know hanging out and stuff like Patrice grew up without him without a dad with his mother, and then when he would get mad at me, he would give me the silent treatment, like he just I'd be calling him yo what's up and he just would ignore me, and I'd be calling him and calling him and it was just weird because it was so weird for me. For that, because, you know, he was always seemed like a masculine dude, you know, and Mm -hmm. but when it came to him, the way he socially, you know, argued, yeah, yeah. it was chick shit. He would he would he would give me a a silent treatment. I'd be like, I've been calling you for two weeks. Why the fuck you didn't call me back? And he'd be like, oh, I figured you would just you was, you know, you would say deny it. And I go, yeah, but what if that you what if (laughs) no, it was worse than that. He goes, I just figured you'd. uh you tell me you're sorry or whatever. You know, you're like, yeah, that's that's yeah, how that's- apologies work, bro. And then I have to then I'd have to sit there and take your apology. Yeah, I, I'm like, what what is wrong with you? What about it? I said, what if I wasn't? What if I wasn't even wrong? Uh, yeah, I just needed it. Uh, so like, he would need this kind of, you know. But you learn that you learn that from your parents. You learn that that's how they socialize, you know. And and so, um, but I I do think that the fact that my son is like, I mean, sometimes he'll he'll like he'll write on the walls. I mean, all kids write on the walls. But he you know, when I go, I'm going to England in a couple of days and uh, all the walls are written on it's crayon. all over, And I'm like, then like, but I would say this, even though it's it's this should be a boundary to that. A lot of us are. We, we, you know, even artistically or even as entertainment as men, we're trying to get to the point where we write on the walls, maybe not, not, you know, logistically, but artistically, you don't, you, you have to, that, that, um, you're literally not writing on the walls. I know. Right. What you it, yeah. It, it's like, you, you don't have, you know, especially artistically you where we would expand the level of creativity to yeah. a degree, but well, then. he's definitely not going to have that. Cause he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. every it's, it's, and he I can needs, always, he needs some stifling. Some of these yeah. kids, he needs need some stifling. Need some stifling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, I, and I'm glad about that. Go ahead. Go ahead I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about your message and everything else. And I'm, I'm just curious about how much, um, pushback you get or, cause it's, it's, it's really an older 
version of manhood and parenting and things seem to be moving out of that and we're in that gap age like i'm doing more for my kid than my father ever would do for me i think that's a positive thing i can't yeah, do my feed him i you know take care like i do that stuff my dad you know didn't really if i he, he didn't feed us he didn't change us it wasn't a bad dad just it was different back then right right it came from a different way of, of doing stuff um I, i'm wondering if you get pushback from you know because people like to um, they like to label you and dismiss you. You mean because of because I'm saying that there are these you're a chauvinist. Yeah, you're, I don't you're, I don't give you're a fuck. toxic I, masculinity. You're, you know what I mean? That, that's not that's not even a thing that I even I, I don't even address that. I, I would I, because and, I think and it's, it's an easy escape to not have a dialogue. Uh, exactly. You know I mean? exactly. Racist. So, racist. So, so right. That racist. So if I say if somebody says it's toxically masculine or this, that I, I the way to that I combat any of that mm-hmm. is to go. Well, what do you why do you think that? And what do you yeah. first of all, what do you mean by toxically masculine? Well, like, what does that mean? What do you mean? What do you mean in your mind when you say that? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. And then usually they haven't even worked that out. Usually they haven't even worked the answer to this 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 terminology that they've created. Um, yeah, I mean, I've come up against it in our business. I, I haven't thought of it in parenting. I just naturally, I go with my instinct, and my instinct is pretty much on point. Mm. It's my channel's pretty clear. I'm on point. I'm, I like you say to me, Rich, you're not a good comic. There's a insecure part of me that would co-sign that and get upset about it. You say I'm not a good father. That's like saying I'm left-handed. It doesn't even touch me because I know it's not true. You have way more experience in right, being a right. comedian. Correct. Right. Yeah. And it should be absolutely, both. yeah, because you're you're definitely an expert. I don't, I haven't seen you do. I've only seen you uh, be a comedian, and that I so I can't go sign on you being a good. Yeah, father. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's is that weird though, right? Yeah. I've only yeah. been a father for two and a half years, yeah. a little over two and a half years. Been doing comedy. I'm I'm digitizing VCR tapes. Yeah, from how when long I had you've short been doing comedy. Right, 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 right. Like it's it's scary. I'm like with short hair and I mean, I was nuts. I, I one time did a show where I taped, you know, those beef and cheese packets. For some reason, I thought it was hilarious. It was called beef and cheese. I taped it on the inside of, and was in my underwear going beef and cheese. Like it was nuts. It made no sense. It had no, maybe the second, third time. I was just like so new to comedy. You know what, you know what Rich? Uh, you you were born at the right time because if you had started doing I'm um, beef and cheese and put that on TikTok, you would have been would huge. Be You'd be the beef, beef and, and cheese. cheese guy I'd be the right beef now. and cheese guy, and I would never be able to get away from it. And right. then there would yeah. be another comedian going spokesman for beef and cheese. Yeah. And, and then, then be some other comic going, oh, man, I want to be like that fucking beef man, and I cheese wanna... Rich Aronovich. He's, that guy is making buku he's got, bucks. He's got that big fat ab. <laughs> and he's, uh, he's got a lot of money. He's got plenty of beef and cheese. <laughs> I know it's a very it's an interesting thing, right? Because like, you know, the more I'm on the planet, the more like I've changed the way I feel about things. Like when the pandemic first happened, I was like, I was a mask man, and I was scared out of my mind. Now I'm like, I don't wear a mask. I don't give mm. a shit. You know what I mean? To me now, it's like I'm saying the same thing that was said in Florida at the beginning of this. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a different thing. It's it's change and it's that's yeah, general. yeah. But I mean, there's also I'm there's also I've more had, information. I, I, but I mean, I'm, you know, Rich, you and I've been a, you and I've been friends for a long time, and I used to say this to you all the time. That the, the the absurdness of how sometimes you would sabotage yourself on stage is what you're talking about. Rich, you know, just for the for the listeners, Rich would be on stage crushing murder. right murdering murder. and then there would be one dude in the front right who that's the guy who who that's the didn't guy. get it that's him he doesn't you get didn't it no you didn't but know i need him to get it you got him to, he got it sure, he his mom just passed away and you don't has, know if his dog died earlier his today dog he just, died. His, his grandmother's his mom passed away. His grandmother terminally canceled not an excuse He's, no no you excuse. laugh Oh, Listen. sure. The towers just fell. It's fine. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Why you are piece? you laughing? You <laughs> piece of shit. Dude, I do the same thing with comments. Like, uh, I'm my brain is trained. Look for the negative. Look for, and then I'm, whoa, yeah. and I've got I've gotten out of there. I've gotten much better about it. I've you know, and also like, you know, I remember we had that conversation. Yeah, yeah. And, and I went, you're right. I'm uh, I need to not, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I hate to see that kind of pain because that's pain. It's it's pain and it's unnecessary 
emotional pain that you don't you don't even deserve that. I mean, it, I know, but it's not. It, it's a choice to try to work on. It's not a choice in the moment. I mean, I have to literally now pray to something I don't know if I believe it or not. God, help me be as funny as possible so I can be of service to these people, your children. <laughs> help me get out of my own way. Help yeah. me get out of my own way so I can be – and that and that get out of my own way thing is really – I really have to pay attention to it. Like I've – I mean I did um, – I remember I like I used to do cruises, right? It's just good money, but it's not like you're – It's not what you want to do. Yeah, it's not no, you don't want to – I'm not doing it anymore. It's like I, yeah. I got out of it, but I, I was doing it. And people would come late, and if they left early, I used to. I mean, I one time I had a mic. While I was mic, I chased the guy out. He was walking. <laughs> I jumped off stage and went by. Where are you going? We well, can't sit for fun. Like I went after the guy. <laughs> I was like, I got to stop doing it's this. Probably hilarious too. And they yeah. think it's a joke, but they don't know. They don't understand that. You oh, are I'm serious. You're asking you're legitimate you're question. Rejecting you're rejecting me. You're not rejecting the real estate I'm pitching mm. or that, you know, they're, they're rejecting me. And I, I'm like, so insecure. There is and I'm only trying to fill that, that hole with that. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, whoa, it's just, and then it's all, and, and like that. what do you mean? You got dialysis now you got to yeah. finish my, it's 15 minutes. You can do can <laughs> it can wait. Yeah. It's, it, it's that level of insecurity. And then I, I, you would go up and I would sit in the back as a reminder not to <laughs> just stare at you as a rem- mm, don't you do would, it. You were like the bouncer of my <laughs> devil. I look at my shoulder and look at you like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm like, don't you do it? Don't you fucking do it? Um, yeah. But I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that helps. But it's an interesting thing about how we create our own reality based on what we think. The things that we're insecure about, we create those realities. So when it comes to when it comes to especially women, I mean, you know, I, I bring it, but like a, a a guy will, I mean, I, I used to ask this question, you know, whenever I do consultations, I would ask a guy, what, how does a woman, when you meet a woman, how does she get to know you? And they all look at me like I'm crazy. I like, how does she know the things that she knows about you? And they, nobody would have an answer. And I would go, you tell her, you, you tell her. She asks questions, and even when you're not directly telling her, there's a subtext to what you're telling her by your body language, by your the, even the tone and the cadence of your voice. Everything we develop this the way in which we socialize in a way based on what we um uh, on what we're accustomed to, what we're afraid of, our fears, our insecurities. So um, you know, Jacob. Williams, he's on Wild and Out. You know him, quiet kid, funny, funny kid, but like very. He's like uh, he, he's on. It's weird because he's on Wild and Out, right, with Nick Cannon. But he's like the white kid who's just like, um, your your mom is so fat that you, uh, she, uh, right? and everybody's like, ah, he's because he's so dry and funny. And he was actually on the show and we were talking to him and he was saying how um, he was saying how his father was like kind of overbearing and kind of abusive, not, you know, emotionally abusive. And so he just got to the point where his voice, he, 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 his voice, the way his voice is, is because he's hiding. Hmm. You know, if I, if I say something, then he's going to jump on my shit. And because he's going to jump on my shit. So every, when he speaks, he's, he's kind of like, so I was, uh, I was, Listen. I was walked into a bar. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So there's a sta- statement. If it's historical, it's hysterical. And the best example I can give is on that show succession. Uh, one of the, the brothers was having a, a wedding and the cake was wrong. And he was freaking about, about the cake. He was fr- losing his mind of being abusive. And I was like, Dude, okay, it's the wrong cake, but chill the mm. fuck out. So then it revealed later in the show that when his mother went crazy and went to kill herself, like they would just put him in a room and give him cake yeah. to try to. Okay. And so it 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 right. it triggered that, yeah, that yeah. response. Yeah, yeah. So like, so when I'm you know when I'm crazy about like certain things, I got to go. What in my childhood yeah. has caused me to be so over? You know what I mean? What what in what in me is going? Oh my gosh! I didn't realize. Yeah, what the connection well, is. My my trauma here has caused me to really react there. Right. Yes. Correlation. Yes. And I've learned that. I've learned that through time. 
and over and over again. And then we have this reinforcement, this intellectual and emotional reinforcement that happens over and over and over and over again. So it only it, it seeps into the subconscious mm -hmm. to a point where it starts. We react. We're reacting to things. And I, and I always say the thing is the, the sexiest thing about a guy. Number one, you know, it's confidence. But I mean, there's a power comes with intentfulness um, that your actions and your words are intentful. And if we think about that, even when it comes to comedy, the best comics are the comics who who get to the point, like too many words, too much talk, too much economy setup. Words. It just it's the economy of words because the economy the economy of words ultimately what it does is it it makes those words it's 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 literally financial. It's supply and demand. It's the less words, the more those words mean something. You get that guy who sits in the corner, doesn't say anything. The day that he opens his mouth and says something, everybody listens because he's not it, it's it's not filled with a lot of white noise and all mm -hmm. all this other stuff. Because even if it's not important, I used to I used to talk about um and the the, the Obama used to do this because there's a even a cadence, you know, like Obama. You, uh, are you talking uh, about the way he purposely talks? Yeah, where he's um, a sniper. Yeah. And he reveals and then he builds it up. <laughs> yeah. And then you right. go. Yeah. The problem with that is, and this goes back to the authenticity of it. If you if you if you if you speak in that tone and then there's no payoff at the end of it, then you feel betrayed. Like you. Well, you he, he, he was an orator boy. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. He Bill always Clinton. gave you the payoff. Yeah. Like, you he know, gave you funny, the pay I saw him live and I was like, oh, but no, wait, before we got really. Left, I went, I went. I, I went. And I, at the, my manager at the time had access to him. They were. He worked for him, and so I got to see him speak at the end of like these. You know, Stevie Wonder and yeah, yeah. Jennifer Hudson and John Bon Jovi. All these people for him. And then I watched him tell a story about how he went to um, to Georgia, and there was uh, twelve <laughs> people there, and they uh, and they said there was no no umbrellas. I don't know where there was this uh, this rain, and we walked in. We were soaked, and we looked, and there was twelve people. And then this woman just said, fired up, ready to go. And I, uh, it became the, uh, the mantra of our whole campaign. And by the end, everyone's going, fired up, ready to go. <laughs> and we were just like losing our minds. Fine. And what's amazing to me, and that's, and what is so crazy is after him, you get, we're well, disaster, big problem, huge, <laughs> three words. <laughs> The irony is bald so, Dante's got very bald. So sad. So sad. Oh, the, the, Baron the, Harry is never gonna have a kid. He's Baron Harry. <laughs> <laughs> in Harry, touch it in. Can't do it. Slow, slow sperm, sperm, slow sperm, yeah. Harry. You are very slow weak. Sperm. Sperm. They're very weak. They're very, They're very weak. weak. Everyone's talking Wheelchair about it. Wheelchair sperm. <laughs> Everyone's talking about the weak sperm. We all know Your it. Sperm are so sad. They're very sad. They're doing bringer shows for Steve Aaron's in such Oh, that's how I started. Oh, that's a deep cut. Inside joke. <laughs> Can't even ruin a stock. That's how sad they are. I'm just say and then and then we got to this guy. And I was like, what? Now we have well, come on, man. Like this and then I'm like, well, what what the what is this thing? Yeah. This yeah. guy looks like he's about to crumble. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's it's just like but I mean look Clinton I didn't you know I'm not saying I like Clinton but he could speak I'm yeah, not yeah. saying I like Obama but he could speak yeah. I'm not saying you know but I I never got into um you know I, some people like the way Trump speaks because it's quote unquote I don't I just can't I'm like well but he hits the points he no, doesn't no, he doesn't point. he doesn't hit the points. He, well, he'll go off on tangents. Right, right. right. I, used to, I used to do a lot yeah. of impressions of him, and I watched his speeches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, we, we were we had a great war. It was a great war, and they served me chocolate cake, and it was very, it was very, the frosting was very big. <laughs> yeah, and the, and his writers are, you know, he'll eventually their, he'll eventually touch on a point, but that's just mostly coincidence. America. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people that uh, chocolate immigration. cake. Fake news. <laughs> China, Obama. He would say the same tense. Now he was good at, you know, pulverizing. He's the, the J. He's the JB Smoove of of, of politics. Yeah, Just he uh, man, you tell me. I, mean, I was at a, I was at a club. Club was old. Man, the club the club was old. I mean, old club, old ass club, old as hell. The very old, old so club, so old. The club was so. Old. Club was old. I went in the bathroom, club was so I looked in the mirror, my reflection was in black and white. 
<laughs> very old, very old club, <laughs> tremendously old. Well, it was called a sleepy club. <laughs> a sleepy club, uh, but it is great. That was, and the nicknames are so the nicknames yeah. are so stupid. <laughs> Baron and Harry, that's what we call him. Yeah, but here's what... toxic, toxic Dante, because he's got a lot of toxic masculinity. But here's, but you know what he is? His, I just figured it out. You know what it is? He's a hack. No, oh, no kidding. He's a hack. make America great again is Reagan's slogan. You know, but that, I right? mean, he's a hack. In that, that was Reagan's in... slogan. I, 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 but I'm saying being a hack means you, you, you appeal to the to the lowest common right. denominator. So he's a hack. So that that we just figured it out. That's what it is. It's a hack. Men and women are so different. They're totally different. <laughs> yeah. Spirit Airlines. Problem. You got to admit he does have so a I lot of material. Black people do this. Yeah, exactly. White people do this. Well, I'm Who's a black got... person. And cats. I stole a purse. <laughs> cats and dogs. Cats and yeah. dogs. Different. Very different. Mike, They're you got it. Totally different. You gotta They're go get different. your. You gotta go get your son, bro. Um, yeah, I cannot wait. Man, Rich, thank you so much for doing this, bro. I wish we had you for longer. We're gonna do Patreon and talk about you while we. <laughs> well, I'm a great guy. <laughs> Uh, thanks Hold for having me, you guys, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Later, Gators. Thank till, you. Till Baron oh, follow Harry. me. Oh, yeah, got to tell everyone to follow yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich is funny. Rich, just, Rich is yeah, funny. You'll see my not so masculine dancing. And then I, I just I, the chat. I would disagree, though. I would disagree. I disagree too because it's confident. It's this yeah. fake confidence. Yeah, I you know, because <laughs> I don't, I don't think about the funny of it. I think about being a good dancer. That's what sells it. Okay. I'm not thinking about being. You said goofy. I'm like, I'm not. I'm trying to dance. No, I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm going, I'm trying to dance, and if I can see that someone's upset, <laughs> then I get closer to them. <laughs> that that's, that's the whole thing. not cell. supposed to be the inspiration. You gotta for dance. see Rich on TikTok and when he's fucking, oh my God. You're not it's supposed great. to use the dancing as a weapon. <laughs> it's, I'm weaponizing great movements, bell bottoms, great a lot of I just great put dancer. in the chat, Donald. <laughs> Donald, Instagram, <laughs> Rich is funny. One word. Right, <laughs> Thanks, thank you guys. Check Enjoy Thanks Patreon. for doing this, bro. All right. All right thank you, Rich. <laughs> Harry, talk to me real quick. Uh, you could all you could go to all my social media at Harry Turjanian. And uh, also, if you want a relationship consultation, you can email me at advice from Harry at gmail.com. Uh, y'all can check me out at uh, Dante, everything, DanteNero.com. Click on consult if you want a consultation. The Dante Nero. Check out my YouTube. I'm putting more stuff up on my YouTube. Don't forget the Man School 202 YouTube. Like and subscribe and all that. All, of, all the content is going up. Also, the, the content from the old Beige Phillips show. Harry's putting that stuff on, uh, on the Patreon as well. That's so right. you can check that out. Um, yeah, patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do the bonus content and listener mail. A lot of good stuff up there. Um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasting? Y'all love y'all, man. Check us on the Patreon side. Peace.